G'day battlers and today we're going to be talking about the Holiday Cup Great League Edition but not only that because we really need to talk about the Holiday Cup Little Edition as well. I'm going to save all of that towards the end of the video and there are a bunch of timestamps in the you know in the little doobly doo down below but it's going to be really important for you to listen to that bit especially if you're planning to play the Holiday Cup Little Edition because there's something really important you need to know now to prepare yourself for that cup uh, if it plays out the way that it may play out, which you get there's the stuff to talk about later on in the video, but do please watch that bit, uh, even if you're done with the Great League stuff. But let's focus in now on the Holiday Cup Great League Edition, which is going to be running from December 16th through to December 23rd, and it is going to be four times Stardust. So if you don't have a Master League roster, this is definitely going to be a week to play. And Holiday Cup is a under 1500 CP cup where we have Pokemon of types with normal, grass, electric, ice, flying and ghosts. So a lot of typings, so a lot going on, uh, but we've simplified it down pretty solidly into, hey to the thumbnail. Uh, we've got three groups on the main graphic and we have some other really important Pokemon down below, down the side. Uh, so on the main graphic, there is one sort of, uh, I guess, kingpin Pokemon of this meta, and that is Vigoroth as Vigoroth tends to be in limited metas that have normal types, but it's even worse now because Vigoroth has just been given a brand new charge move in the move update, that being Rock Slide. So Vigoroth sort of used to be able to be kept under wraps a little bit by the Flyers, now Vigoroth has some playback against those flyers as well. So it's definitely a very powerful Pokemon and that's why there's sort of like a tiny little Obstagoon and Double right next to it as sort of side grades that are reasonably just worse than Vigoroth. So Vigoroth is just better than both of them in every single way pretty much. Uh, in the other, the other two groups, we sort of have a traditional flyers group in the bottom left and then a sort of anti-flyers group in the bottom right. Uh, so we sort of have that traditional fighter, anti-fighter, anti-anti -anti anti-fighter sort of combination going on, but it is a little bit, there's a bit, a bit more going on than that. So in the Flyers group, we have fire types like Talonflame, Charizard, Skeledurge is also sneaking into this sort of, it's the only non-flyer there, but it sort of fits into that group. And then we've got things like Altaria, Mandibuzz, Gligar, and Mantine. Uh, and an instant thing that might be going off in your head, especially after I just mentioned Rock Slide on Vigoroth, is that Rock Slide is going to really hurt those Fire Flyers. And Talonflame, the matchup is sort of a one-turn difference. So it's... I guess PV Poke default sims will have Vigoroth being Talonflame because Vigoroth is able to get a Body Slam bait and then it lands the Rock Slide and that is enough to KO Talonflame. If you don't want to mess with baits and you just go straight Rock Slide, then you're going to be one turn short and you're not quite going to make it. So it's a sort of very back and forth matchup that could go a lot of different ways depending on how things play out. I think that if either Pokemon sort of swaps in, like Vigoroth is very commonly used as a safe swap, at that point, your Talonflame is sort of going to be up a creek a little bit and it's going to be in some trouble unless you have a shield advantage. So definitely going to be a, uh, a Pokemon to sort of struggle around. The other Flyers have a little bit of a better time uh, just because they're not as weak. They don't have the double super effective well, weakness, super weakness to the rock damage. Uh, so things like Gligar, I guess, do have a little bit of a better time, but it's still not great because Vigoroth, even though it is a pseudo fighter, it's not actually taking that super effective damage from the flying move. So uh, it's just really just the resistance to counter that is sort of carrying them along to sort of try and force through the matchup, but it's still not great. And they really do have to watch out for those rock sides a little bit. Uh, and, you know, Body Slam also being a really good move with same type of attack bonus. It's a pretty scary Pokemon, but it's sort of the best you've got to take on uh, Vigoroth because there's no... There's no great answer, to be honest with you. I, th I think there's probably other sort of a little bit off the kilter meta picks. Um, I mean, we do have one one down there, but there could be things like, I guess, Chestnut is eligible for this meta. Uh, but and, 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 you know, you're know, you in a bad spot. Vigoroth is going to be the Pokemon that you have to think about the most in building your teams. And then there's the Pokemon that sort of beat those flyers. So there's electric Pokemon like Chargebug, like Alolan Graveler, Unovan Stunfisk, Lantern. And then you've got things like uh, Dunsparce with Rollout. You've got Pachirisu uh, as an electric type as well. Dugong's there as sort of an Ice Shard uh, user. Uh, Aurorus is sort of blending into the background a little bit, but... Aurorus is there as well to get that ice coverage. Obviously, this is a simplified meta infographic, so some of these Pokemon are going to be quite bad up against something like a Skeledurge. It does very well against something like Charge Bug, for example, because of its bug typing. Uh, things like uh, Lantern are going to do really well against the, the the fire types, but they might sort of struggle a little bit more against something like an Altaria, just because Altaria is resisting all of its 
fast moves and charge moves. I think PV Poke recommends going for the water gun move set just because there is so much fire going around and you hit the Gligar and that extra damage on Vigoroth might end up being helpful. But I, I think there's you could make an argument for Spark as well. Um, but I'm I'm inclined to think that water gun is the way to go, especially because you are hitting those other things like Stunfisk, like yeah, like Alolan Graveler. Uh, for example. Uh, so that's sort of like in a nutshell, like these guys are pretty much all losing to the Vigoroth as well. Um, Obstagoon, like again, don't think of that so much as a group because Obstagoon does lose to a lot of these things. <laughs> it's a bit of an awkward Pokemon, but you know, it, it's definitely another consideration and something you might want to look at if you want some sort of double counter strat or something like that. But let's talk about these guys down the side here. We've got Magnezone up the top. Magnezone, a very strong Pokemon, but a very frail Pokemon. So it can do a lot of damage against a lot of Pokemon. Pokemon, but you know, it's obviously going to lose pretty hard to a lot of these picks. So it's something to consider, I guess, you know, inadequates might end up using it at some point. Um, we've got Alola Ninetales, which is actually a pretty good Vigoroth counter, but you still have to be pretty scared of the Body Slam Rock Slide combo. So it's like not the best, but it's definitely an option uh, that also gives you some anti-flyer coverage, except for the fire types. Again, there's the, this is sort of dichotomy. I was sort of considering breaking this graphic up into the fire types and the non-fire types and then having some relationships there. But I think you can sort of get the picture a little bit just, you know, considering the fire types. And again, this isn't gospel. Like this isn't uh, the hard and fast. Every Pokemon with an arrow pointing towards it loses to that Pokemon, right? Um, so then we've got something like Cradilly. Cradilly is a really interesting one that sort of core breaks the flyers and the anti flyers a little bit. You've got that. Uh, what does it have now? Has it got Rock Slide? It got a Rock Charge move, sort of relatively recently, maybe like three six months ago. Uh, that was better than Stone Edge. I feel like it's Rock Slide. I should probably know, but it ha it, it's got a rock move and that's really hitting those flies. Um, and then you've got the Grass Knot that can really hit the things like Alolan Graveler, like Stunfisk, like Lantern, like Dugong. So you've got some really interesting play there with Bullet Seed charging up pretty fast as well. You've got things like Arctabax doing some big dragon damage uh, while also having some ice coverage. So you've got some anti-flyer, but you've also got neutral coverage for the entire meta, but you are going to lose pretty well to the Vigoroth because it does have counter. You've got then got uh, Frostlass as well, which is always a really interesting Pokemon in these metas. It's not like the best Pokemon uh, by any means because there is a lot of fire running around and you are also still weak to the Rock Slides from the Vigoroth, but hey, it's still it's still Frostlass. You've got Triple Axle now, which is a little bit, you know, a little bit quicker, puts a little bit more pressure on, I guess, uh, with some buff potential, but yeah, you know, it, it's an option. And then Lickitung is sort of just something that is going to be a part of a done of cause. Like you sort of look at this meta and you're like, like Lickitung doesn't do anything crazy, uh, but it's Lickitung. So it's got so much bulk that it's going to get used. Uh, and it is what it is. You're just going to have to deal with that and see. I mean, like Vigoroth is going to take a few body slams back from the Lickitung. So it's like, there's a bit of counterplay there. But in a nutshell, this is sort of uh, an overview, a very broad general overview of the Holiday Cup Great League. But that does mean that we have to talk about the Little Cup. Uh, so good luck for this one. Again, it is four times dust. Uh, but let's just bring up this graphic here. And this is just the PV Poke Top 4 for the holiday little cup let's just uh make this no oh, I, I didn't really plan this out let's just woo, bring this right up here um smeagol number one on pv poke with a lock on flying press you can only have one charge move you can't unlock a second one and it has a pv poke score of 100 and the next the second place vigoroth is under 90. And that's a Pokemon that you would sort of expect to do all right up against Smeagol. Um, so two things we need to talk about here. One, Smeagol hasn't been banned, uh, which is crazy. It's ridiculous. Smeagol, essentially a hundo Smeagol maxes out to level 50, just under the 500 CP cap, which I didn't actually explain in case you don't know. Little Holiday Cup, which is going to be two weeks after this Holiday Cup, uh, is going to be 500 CP and down, but the same typings otherwise. Usually Smeagol would be taken out of this sort of thing, um, I'm not sure why it hasn't been this time because it's a very powerful Pokemon lock on fastest charging fast move in the game and flying press a very low energy move that is going to be doing a lot of damage to a lot of the big picks. Like you're seeing number two, number three, number four, Vigoroth, Amora, Volpix are all going to be taking a lot of damage from these flying presses that you're getting to astronomically fast. Uh, and again, like you're maxing out level 50 just at the cap. So like it's sort of the perfect dominant Pokemon. Um, for those that aren't aware of how Smeagol works um, with 
uh, essentially you take a snapshot, you get the moves of the Pokemon you've snapshotted. No Pokemon in the game has lock on flying press, but if you take a snapshot of something like Porygon Z that's been purified, so you have lock on return, return isn't a part of Smeagol's moveset. So if you take pictures of this return Porygon Z with lock on, then it just rolls a random charge move that it has access to. And that's how you try and stumble on a lock on flying press Smeagol. Um, but you also want a hundo. So it's really tricky. Um, so if they don't ban it, you should really start like snapshotting some Porygon Zs now, uh, to try and roll onto a lock on flying press. Maybe if you're really lucky, you and a friend you both get one and you can sort of try and lucky trade to get some good IV ones. Um, and also hopefully have XLs on hand as well to do that sort of thing. But that sort of speaks to why it's not a very fair Pokemon to be eligible in this cup. And I feel like... You know, we've seen bans come really late in the past. Uh, Electric Cup is the one that comes to mind with Vikavolt and whatever the evolution was or the, you know, the one either way. Uh, they got banned because they had access to Mud Slap and that came really late. It wasn't originally announced like that. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see Smeagol getting banned in the end, which is actually why traditionally I would have sort of put a little cup, uh, ho little holiday cup medicine simplified in here as well. Uh, but I think that, there's entirely potential for two different metas. The meta that has Smeagol and the meta that doesn't have Smeagol. And we don't, I'm not confident. I wouldn't put money on either one being the actual case. I feel like they'll probably come in and ban Smeagol because if they don't, then the people that have one have a lock on flying press Smeagol with the XLs to build it. Uh, just going to be at such an advantage over everyone else. Like it's sort of insane. Um, but you know, just in case until we reach that point where they do ban it, start snapshotting just in case um but yeah in a nutshell that is uh that is holiday cup a little edition so we will wait and see but with that said thank you for watching i probably should have also mentioned uh you know back on the great league there are releasing that new ice pokemon uh hang on i wrote down what it's called sea total and sea titan are coming out on december 18th they're ice types so they're probably going to lose to Vigoroth. They're probably going to beat some of the Flyers. They're probably going to lose to the Flyers, but we don't know the moves yet. So, you know, it's just something to keep in mind, but it sort of slots, slots right in. And, you know, there were other picks in this meta that I didn't include. Um, uh, you can check PV Poke, and I'm sure there'll be content creators coming out with some teams in the coming days as well. So, uh, yeah, good luck in Holiday Cup and good luck on your snapshots <laughs> to try and get that Smeagol. But, uh, of course, thank you to my patrons and supporters over on YouTube membership as well, which is it's a thing. It's down there. It's some buttons, but don't forget to subscribe. Do, you, do I even say them in this video? And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, especially that subscribe one, and I'll see you in the next one, whatever that may be probably not going to come back for a little cup, but we'll, we'll see what happens with Smeagol. Fingers crossed they ban it, I think. <laughs>